Okay, I think the audio is caught up. I wanted to go over uh, what's important for getting your uh, your final commentary essay correct. Remember, this is peer review week. Please use the uh, document I put in, Announcements for Peer Review. You are free to peer review each other's papers. I, uh, I know for some other classes that I've observed, it's very difficult for everyone to find a peer review partner. So I decided not to try to require that. That gets crazy. Your own peer review, which is your own critical evaluation of what you're doing right and maybe what you need to improve. That'll suffice, but please don't use anything but the document I put in uh, the peer review uh, to get all your points. I wanted to address your final paper. It's really critical that you follow the content for the uh, paragraphs as I laid out the assignment. You know, a commentary has a certain flow, a certain number of things that logically work, but you have to do that, but also meet the requirements of what I, uh, I set out. Mainly, in your introduction, please state your topic as a trend that is doing something. This week's first discussion question does that. It asks you to take a topic and write out the topic in a thesis. So you master the thesis. It's important that you do that. Um, make sure your reader knows how the trend originated, how it began. If you're writing about cell phones and their effects, the cell phone is not where the trend started. The cell phone is just a device that was actually invented here in Phoenix at Motorola. The trend is social media platforms, Google Play, the iTunes Store, where you actually have the ability to influence people and have an effect on society the way that the modern social platform and apps that I have. So you wanna make sure you tell your reader where the trend actually began, where it can be identified. Um, and what, what effect is it having? What is the effect doing? It doesn't have to be bad, it could be very good. If you're lost in the woods, having a cell phone, especially someday with 5G could save your life. But many people are writing, chiming in, that apps and social media are giving way to cyberbullying. People with shortened attention spans, inability to differentiate real data and news and information from stuff you read on Reddit that may or may not be true. In other words, commentary and opinion as opposed to researched and verified information. Uh, make sure that you state your pattern. In other words, your trend is part of a larger pattern in society. The cell phone is part of a larger pattern, like Marshall McLuhan predicted, the global village. It's part of a larger pattern of completely ubiquitous information that's around us all the time. The digital world is really a parallel universe of what we find in the cell phone. Um, if you're writing on the trend of uh, uh, maybe people are are not as able to relate to each other and the breakdown of family and communication. That's part of a larger trend of the way that people communicate nowadays, the fast, the rapid way that we talk, as opposed to the more deliberate and careful way that people communicated through things like letters. So think of a pattern that your trend is part of. Evaluate what's the current thinking. This is a good place for research. What do experts and people chime in as to what the effect or what the purpose or what the actions are that this trend is having in society? Um, and your new perspective is really, after your research and you've thought about your trend, how do you see it either affecting you and your world or in the future going forward society at large? Is the awareness of echo green, don't use plastic straws, ban the plastic bottle really eventually going to have the effect of making us so aware of pollution that it's gonna actually do something to, to help ban it? What is the, the looking forward to, to know, to figure out as a rose of this? What's, what's important about your trend that you wrote about it that a reader to, to take away from it? Um, make sure that you're logical. 
your paragraph. Look at the slides I posted last week. Make sure you follow the content for each paragraph. That's really important. Make sure your three sources are well used in text citations. And don't forget, use good APA. Use your library or Purdue OWL resources to uh, to to correctly use in text citations and correctly format your paper. Make it look look real spiffy for your final paper, and I and I think you'll be okay. So I wanted to focus on that. Oops, I set this paper aside. Uh, that you concentrate on filling the required content for your paper. You use good formatting. Um, from your peer review that you look at what you're doing well and what needs to improve and you make a good, real sound effort at making the very best uh, final draft of your commentary that you possibly can for next week. There's one more thing we do at the end of this course. We have a uh, literacy assessment. It's not a test. It's more like a metric evaluation that every student in English 105 takes. And they use this data to input information about what may be working and what might be a measured outcome from English 105. It's worth a, a few points. I think it's 10 points or something in your grade. So at the very end, there's a thing called literacy assessment. That's a, no right or wrong, but you got to answer all the questions. You can, I think, take as much time as you want. And uh, with that, work on your peer review and work on uh, reviewing the slides and reviewing the content and make your paper the very best that you can. Okay, thanks.